want to determine when you're going to be starting plants and with seeds is what your average last frost date is and you can usually type in your zip code there's tons of websites type your zip code in and it will tell you your average last frost date um, for us it's June 30th which is exceedingly late um, and so we'll do stuff in the greenhouse and in the house this is a little garden planner I have and it's for the spring season other side is fall season but in the spring season you can put the red line is your average last spring frost date um, I had to actually cut ours because it wasn't quite, but let's say you're on May 3rd, it will tell you when to plant outdoors, indoor when to start your seeds, how, the, what the spacing is supposed to be, and when you will be able to get those plants from your garden. Where do you get that? Uh, well, I actually um, got this when I ordered some seeds, but oftentimes online there's a hundred different websites. So if you just type in um, last average frost date in you know Google search or whatever, it will populate itself. <laughs> Sorry, baby. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and show, um, there's our dog. She's not very happy. She's in the kennel. She wants to play. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show uh, some seed starting. So when you, ha when you have a um, container for seeds, I reuse my year to year, you want to go ahead and wash, wash them in a nine part water, one part bleach solution for about 20 minutes. You can soak a little bit longer if you want to. Dry it adequately. That way no fungus or bugs will come from the previous year. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and use a seed starting mix, unless you make your own. I don't do that, but you can find the information online. What's um, in it? What's in it, it's uh, oftentimes peat moss, um, some composting things, very light and fluffy because you have these little seeds and they need to germinate. The bigger the seed, the chunkier the soil can be. Little seeds need very fine material to get started. So you can see it's very fine, very dry and flaky. Sometimes you can buy it with uh, fertilizer in, sometimes without. I tend to buy it without fertilizer. Eventually, once your seeds have germinated and you've got little plants, you will need to add some food for the plants. Whether you save your seeds or whether you purchase seeds, they will oftentimes last year to year. And this is how I hold mine. I write, it's a, it's a memory, like a photo book memories, you can see. And I just go ahead and write on the outside what type of seeds I'm saving in there. Um, and you can tell they get fat and I need some more and then that way I can pull them out, read the information that I need. So now to what I... <laughs> Sorry, that dog. Okay, so now to what I'm planting. I'm gonna go ahead and onions, you need to start early. And so I'm gonna do some onions, some leeks, endive, a little spinach, a little kale, eggplant, and lettuce. I particularly like these onions. Um, they grow on top of the ground, so they're quite interesting, and they don't get dirty. Um, I've never seen anything like it, and yeah, it's kind of fun. Be sure to tune in for part three, where we'll show you how to make a self-watering mini greenhouse. So the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and put your dirt in the container, um, and Jack is going to make sure that they are all even. I just use an old spoon or a plastic spoon to keep around with me, and you can level out the different dirt after you pour it in. <laughs> they are not from my garden yet. Um, so these onions, I'm gonna go ahead and seed, and they make sure you read the back because some things need to get planted deep. These you just sprinkle on the top and then you'll moisten. Onions you really wanna make sure don't dry out. We're gonna go ahead and have Jack put two to three seeds in each container, and then he'll moisten them, and he'll just sprinkle on the top. So these seeds and the emerging seedlings are gonna be quite uh, tender. So you don't wanna pour water on them, you can drown them. If you get it too moist, you can also get a lot of fungus in your dirt. So um, we just spray a little bit and make sure that they're moist. Don't water them again until they're dried out. Um, Actually, you can wait until, if it's moist enough, you can wait until the uh, seedlings have emerged. So one of the most important things is make sure that you label your seeds. So this is a, a one from last year. It, the sun just bleaches it out, so I just put them in the sun. It'll get rid of a Sharpie. Um, the other thing I do is I cross it out and write on the other side. Stick them in because they're all going to look the same when they start to come out and you're gonna forget what's what. This is how to make your own tropical rainforest. And you can leave these, this on until your seedlings emerge.
You can also buy plastic lid covers that go on, but I don't have them. You can see here the difference between the two bulbs, the cool and the warm. So when people talk about leggy plants, this is a leggy plant. This is from my garden last summer. I brought it inside. It has not been getting enough light, and so it's just getting tall and skinny, and it's not really healthy. Your little seedlings, you want short and squat and sturdy for the garden. Coming soon, carrots, kale, and onions. <laughs> I don't always drive fire engines, but when I do, I drive 351.